Welcome back to a new video about digital controller implementation. We have in this case the example number six and we will discuss the PID control realization in digital format. And we have here again the flowchart configuration we will discuss both in the parallel and the cascade configuration we have discussed separately in the previous videos. So let's look at our example. We have the following transfer function of a digital PID controller, which is given by this expression. You see that again in the Z transfer. The PID controller is here placed in here, and we have a sampling in, with, uh, in the front and also at the back. And we have also the hold operation, which is a zero order hold, and we have the plan. This is actually a complete diagram of a discrete time or digital controller design or digital controller system. And specifically, we now focus only on the PID controller implementation using a flowchart. So what the question is here, the following, draw a flowchart for the implementation of this digital PID controller using cascade transfer functions and also the parallel transfer function. That's actually the two questions here. Let's look at the solutions and we start with the expression of the PID controller in the digital domain, DZ, that can be also written in this form because this is now the parallel configuration, you see the K1 plus the K2 times the TZ over Z minus 1 and plus K3 times Z minus 1 over TZ. And T here is the sampling period and the K1, K2 and the K3 are the associated gains or constants for each term. Actually you can see that this is a P part of the design or the controller. This is the integral part and this is the derivative part. You can see that clearly when you convert the Z to the S domain when you look at the tables. Now we can also write it like this by combining these three uh, terms using the common denominators. You have this expression and you now combine them together. You add them up, you have this expression. You see it is a second order system. Now we can again work it out by collecting or the, uh, first working out the parentheses and collecting the terms with the z squared and also with the z and also the constant. We have now this expression. When you now divide by t, which is our sampling period, this will go, you lose here the square, you will have here a over 2, over t I mean, you will lose this uh, t here and you will get 2k3 over t. And you also get it over t here, but you lose this t here. So the, what's the reason for doing this? I would like to compare this expression to the given expression here later, and this expression will be used for the parallel configuration. So when you move on, you can also do the following. You divide the numerator and the denominator by z squared. So you will lose this. This will be 1. This will be z to the power minus 1. This will be then z to the power minus 2. That's shown here. And this is, when you work it out, it will be z squared minus z. That will be then 1 minus z to the power minus 1. Now you can now see this and also compare it with that one. And you can now work it towards the uh, flowchart we need. The cascade configuration first. The cascade configuration, we start with our transfer function. We already worked out this parentheses. So you see the z squared minus z. And also parentheses here in the denominator are worked out. When you now divide by the z squared, you get this expression. And the general second order transfer function we have discussed for the cascade transfer function, you can see that also in the previous videos, is this. We can see the coefficients c0, c1, and c2, and d1 and d2. So we have five coefficients. Also the gain k, which is in this case 56.3. So looking at this, what we have for our PID controller is that c is 1 and c C0 is 1, C1 is minus 1.531, etc. You just follow the coefficients. And also the k is given and d itself is minus 1, but d2 is 0 because there is no 0 to the power minus 2 in the denominator. And when you look at the general expression, you see where the C0 is, d C1 is, and C2 is. D1 itself is also uh, known and D2 is also known looking at the flowchart. So we have now our expression here. So in general, this is now the second order cascade configuration. You see the gain and also the other gain elements and also the delays. Now, we now place the k's and the c's and the d's here and also the values we have just determined, we have these values. But we already know that this is zero, so there is no connection here. 
and this is a minus one so with this negative feedback you could actually just a plus one here this is a one so just a wire so you can actually simplify this so you get now this format so you see this is just a wire this is actually also a connection which is just a wire, but then a plus here so remember this is an open circuit so there's no connection and there will be now the following values here so this is the simple light form now looking now at the parallel configuration again remembering that this is the expression for the parallel configuration you see the three terms now the parallel configuration will be used by making use of the first order transfer functions so this is the first order transfer function we have the first the p then the i and also the d terms but these are the first order terms so we can use the first order transfer function general form for the i and the d and now this is for the let's say the integral part and you have now its own coefficient you see again four coefficients a0 a1 and b1 and also the k now specifically with a prime designated to the i and the other one d2 is now designated to the d element which is a derivative part i use now double prime and you have now this so this is again the general expression for the first order terms for the pid controller digital pid controller now this is now the pid controller flow chart uh, when you use the gain the integral and also the derivative part but now we need to also use here the coefficient which is determined Again, the k1 is just a value here, which is determined that shortly, and k prime and then k double prime. So let's see what we then will get. This is these are the values by first working out this. So let's see what you get because this is one, this is zero, this is minus one. Now, how do you uh, see that? Now, looking at this expression, this is k1, is here. But this is k2 times t which is actually a constant and looking at this expression this is a k and there is a, a0 here which is a 1 and there is no a1 so that is 0 and there is a 1 here and minus that must be then b1 it will be then minus 1 so that's all shown here in a similar form for the other one so you can actually look at from this data Again, we see some zeros, some ones, and from minus ones, etc. So we can again simplify this. There is no connection here. There is a minus, so there will be a negative here, and there will be also a, just a short here, and there's also no connection there. There's a minus here, so again, again with a minus sign will be plus. So this is all merged this nice simplified form. Again, the values and also the configuration. Let's go back very uh, again. So you see actually. The transition from this to that one so moving on to the actual uh, transfer function we have after partial fraction expansion i have discussed this in great detail in example number five you will have this so i will leave the details out otherwise the videos will be a lot uh, longer we have now this and now when you now compare this with our first order general first order transfer function you will recognize that d1 now here is 0.7415 which is our k and z to the mi power minus 1 over 1 minus z to, z to the power minus 1 so you can recognize the parameters in similar form for d2 and you can again see what the k pr double prime is a0 double prime etc so we can move on and then work it out of course we need to do the over so we need to divide by z here also divide by z here so you can now recognize the values here now when you now go to the flowchart again the same flowchart as in the previous slide now we again use our parameters from d1 and also d2 and also the k1 now we use the values we have for our digital controller these are the values here the other ones and also the k1 which is 56.3 again you see some zeros ones and minus ones so you can again make that more simple and that is shown here so we have the values k1 k prime and k double prime and also here the two delay elements you see that this is a short this is gone this is actually a negative feedback but actually again negative feedbacks will be a positive feedback you don't have a connection here you also have a connection there so that is actually the simplified form for the parallel configuration and this will be then for the question B. All right, guys, this is our example number six discussing the digital P 
PID control implementation using the cascade configuration also the parallel configuration if you have any questions about this example please let me know i will try to answer them as soon as possible see you next time in another video take care